place of uh, introducing Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, who's been described in many different ways in my profession by people from my profession. We've called you a maverick. <laughs> We've called you a monk on a motorcycle. We've called you a glamorous, flamboyant guru. But for your devotees, you are simply Sadhguru. And yet, uh, Sadhguru, at a time when faith seems to be in collision with so many other questions that come up as a matter of individual liberty, I think this will make for a very interesting and important conversation for our time. So I would like to thank you for being part of this conversation. And let me start with the spiritual. And I hope what you say today is also addressed to the skeptics. I count myself among a skeptic who, if told that another human being possesses some sort of godly power, I would perhaps, as the first instinct, not believe it. But what I find interesting about what you've, some of your sayings is captured by Aruthati Subramaniam in this book, is that you're actually saying that what we experience beyond our five senses, anything that we experience beyond the five senses can be called God, can be called power, or can be called yourself. So if God doesn't necessarily exist, why do we need gurus? Why do we need Sadhguru? <laughs> Is there a my microphone? Okay, that's good. <laughs> do you drive in Delhi? Do I drive? Mm -hmm. Unlike you, <laughs> I have a fear of wheels. <laughs> so if you drive in an unknown terrain, yes. you use uh, these days a GPS. Yes. Usually a strange woman will tell you, turn right, you yes. turn right. She says, turn left, you said turn left. She says, make a U-turn, you make a U-turn. Why? Simply because you're… you're not familiar with the terrain. When you're in an unfamiliar terrain, it is sensible to take instructions. So, are you… are you saying gurus are the new GPS? <laughs> not new, not new. Long time ago we've been. <laughs> for a very long time, way before the GPS came. <laughs> GPS means what? Guru positioning system <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I have to say that while I don't drive, I've often sat in a car and heard that girl's voice on Google Maps. And often Google Maps does actually, not… does you not actually, give you the right advice. You can change it to your man's voice if you wish. Okay. <laughs> beginning of this conversation perhaps underlines that you are atypical. You are atypical of what we imagine gurus to be. We expect people who don't crack jokes. We expect people who don't have a zest for life. Somehow all of our spirituality has traditionally been centered around giving up, around abstinence of some kind, abstaining from pleasures, from denying creature comforts. Why do you believe that the material can coexist with the spiritual? It's… it's not that I believe, it's only because you have a body which is your physicality. Yes. You have a life within. If you did not have a body, if you're disembodied, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> yes. Because uh, with disembodied beings you don't have conversations, okay? Hmm. I know people… People do talk to ghosts. People are trying to do that these days. Yes. <laughs> Because they're not in talking terms with the living, <laughs> they choose the dead. <laughs> because you can make the dead speak whatever you want. The living will speak what they want. Yeah. It's yeah. a big problem. <laughs> it's a very serious problem in a conversation. Because I will say what I want to say. But if I was dead, you can make me say whatever you want to say. Hmm. But can an Because you can do both sides of the conversation. But if your philosophy, or you hate the word philosophy, I know, if your technology of inner engineering, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment, is available to all of us to, in a sense, find strength within ourselves, Sadhguru, then does that mean that the atheist and the agnostic and the skeptic can also embrace spirituality? Is inner engineering only for those who believe, or is it for anyone who <laughs> asks questions? <laughs> The previous question is a loaded one, still not answered fully. Yes, I know, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't given up on it yet. <laughs> Coming to this, uh, see,
See, you're putting atheists and agnostics and skeptics together, it's a wrong classification. Atheists and thieves are together, they're one kind. Because they both have certainty? Both… both believe something that they do not know. Both are not sincere enough to admit that they do not know. Yes. This is the biggest problem. The biggest problem in the world is people are still not straight enough to come to a place, what I know, I know, what I do not know, I do not know. Because they have not realized the immensity of I do not know. I do not know is the basis of longing to know and seeking to know and the possibility of knowing. The moment you destroy I do not know, you destroyed all possibilities of knowing. So this is atheism and this is theism. They're not different. They're in the same boat, they pretend to be different. One believes positively, another believes negatively, but they both believe something that they do not know. One uh, person, a well-known person in the country who goes about claiming he's an atheist all the time, one day comes up to me, somebody just introduces me first time. I say, Namaste. He says, do you know I believe there is no God? I said, I don't even believe that. Do you mean Javed Akhtar? <laughs> I am not… No, that was a… that was a… that was a good imitation, so I guess it wasn't difficult. I'm not taking names, I'm saying, the thing is you also believe something, you don't seem to understand that. Yes. The most important thing is to come to this place of being utterly straight and sincere with life. What I know, I know. What I do not know, I do not know. If you come to this much, if you closely pay attention to everything around you, you will see with all this scientific exploration, we do not know even a single atom in its entirety, that's a fact. So what is it that you know, Sadhguru? <laughs> Why are millions of people your devotees? Because you just said that honesty they is, about, is about… They about usually They don't claim that they're my devotees. What do they say then? Huh? What do they say then? Usually they claim they're meditators, volunteers and stuff. Okay, <laughs> volunteers then. <laughs> but there must be something they think that you know, because you just said that life is actually about admitting what you don't know. The corollary to that is there are things that you do know. We do know we are sitting at the Habitat Center Amphitheater at this moment in Delhi. That we know. What beyond this Sadhguru do you know and what do you not know? <laughs> I've asked you like in the question of more existence now <laughs> <laughs> What do I know? I don't know anything except this one. I know this piece of life from its origin to its ultimate. Everything that I need to know about this life, I know. And I see every other life, is actually the same thing if you look deep enough. So in that context, because today modern science is coming to this, there is a, a theory which is evolving, which is called as constructional theory. Mm. What they are beginning to say is, whether it's an amoeba or a grasshopper or a earthworm or a bird or an animal or an elephant or you or me, or the whole cosmos, the fundamental design is same. It is only a question of complexities and sophistication of the same design. So this is something always the yogic science has been saying, that if you know, you know anda, you know pindanda, <laughs> you know, if you know the atomic, you know the cosmic, because the fundamental design is same, it's only a question of complexity and sophistication of what's happening. So fundamentally, if you know this piece of life, you know everything by inference. But when you say this piece of life, do you mean yourself? Do you mean this moment? What do you mean by this piece of life? You are a piece of life, aren't you? Are you life or are you, are you media? <laughs> are they mutually exclusive? No, no, because people have mediums, that's why I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would hope I'm a flesh and blood person, unless somebody knows better. Flesh and blood you gather. Yes. Isn't it? What you call is my flesh and blood, you slowly gathered over a period of time. If this much accumulation of flesh and blood, this much impressions have to be gathered, there must be something more fundamental, isn't it?